Good morning, one and all. Orida to KBC's daily Bible blog going through the book of Psalms. And today I have chosen Psalm 18. And it's entitled, there's a big long title for it this today, uh, for the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And then he said, and it goes on to give the psalm, a long one and a long intro for a long psalm. Only three psalms have a longer introduction. And I think only three psalms have a longer length in total as well. Uh, the reference to Saul refers to the time, I suppose, beginning from 1 Samuel 20, when Saul, who was king, decided he didn't want David around. Uh, and out of jealousy for David's popularity, he attacked him. and David had to flee for his life. Nevertheless, Saul is not counted explicitly as one of David's enemies here. He says, delivered him from all his enemies and Saul. And we'll come back to that thought in a minute. So this psalm records his thanks to God for helping him during this period of his life and other difficult times, other battles. And this psalm is virtually the same as the psalm sung by David towards the end of his life, as recorded in 2 Samuel 22. Um, and it's likely that David composed this uh, psalm as a youngster or as a young man. Um, yet in his old age, David could look back uh, with great gratitude and sing this song again, looking at his whole life. And the verses I want to highlight are these. In verse 16, it says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. And in verse 19, it says, He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. And these words certainly describe uh, David's journey, uh, one that starts in the depths and ends in a spacious or open place. So how do these words describe his journey with Saul, who, well, he doesn't explicitly include him as an enemy category, but for all intents and purposes, he, he is or was David's enemy. How did he deal with him, though? And this psalm, uh, obviously mentions him. So let's look at the backstory. At the beginning of the conflict, David flees to the cave of Adullam. And there he hides and he's later joined by friends and family and a whole bunch of folk described in 1 Samuel 22, verse 2, as all those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathering around him. And he became their commander. Sounds like a really happy place, doesn't it? Um, anyway, he records his prayer to God there, which you can find in Psalm 142. Just pick out one or two verses there. I pour out before him my complaint. That's David speaking about God. He's pouring out before him his complaint. Tell him my trouble. And when my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. So here we find him casting his cares, of which he had many, on the Lord, taking his complaint to God which I've discovered happens a lot in the Psalms. David certainly does that a lot in the Psalms. And we hear Jesus echoing those words, really, by saying, come to me, all who are heavily laden, and, and I will give you rest. Cast your burdens on me. And that's important, isn't it? Because if we don't cast our burdens on the Lord, we'll probably cast them onto the nearest and dearest around us, and that's not good. So he spends time with God, which is crucial. And later in his journey, he's found in the desert, fleeing from Saul, and he comes across this very desolate place. And he talks about a thirst and, um, you know, as the deer seeks uh, for, for water and pasture, so my heart seeks after you, my Lord. And anyway, in Psalm 63, he says this, O God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. But I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. He's getting a vision of who God is the more he spends time with him. He's getting perspective. And he even mentions songs of joy in Psalm 63, visions of power and glory. And it's certainly not because of his circumstance. It's because of the comfort he's now receiving from God in his distress. The threat hasn't gone away. It's very much there. In fact, He's going to come face to face very shortly with his pursuer. And the question is, how is he going to respond? And eventually he goes to the region of En Gedi, where he and his men take refuge in a huge cave. And while hiding in it, unknown to him, shortly 
Saul is going to wander into that very cave to spend a penny and be very vulnerable. Talk about having your guard down. But what is David's mindset at this point? Well, we do know because in Psalm 57, he writes about it. And he says in verse 7 and 8, My heart is confident in you, O God. My heart is confident. No wonder I can sing your praise. Wake up, my heart. Wake up, O lyre and harp. I will awaken the dawn with my song. <laughs> wow. Now that, that psalm, there's no talk of revenge killing as there are in previous psalms, killing by the sword. Uh, but there's plenty of talk of a sovereign God who is in control. And then Saul walks into that cave un, you know, alone, unsuspecting, and David is near him. And his, his mighty men, his, his compatriots, if you like, are urging him to take his revenge and kill Saul. But he doesn't. And why is that? Well, he's seen God in all his glory and, and gained a new perspective on things. And, and perhaps rather than seeing Saul as his enemy now, he sees him as his vulnerable father figure, because he called him father, didn't he? And he also sees him as the Lord's anointed, as king. And he decides, no, he's not going to take revenge. He's going to nick a corner of Saul's garment off him, sneaking up behind him to prove that he had opportunity to kill him. And he follows him out. And in one of the most extraordinary exchanges and scenes from scriptures, he actually effectively forgives Saul for what he has done for his murderous intentions. And he says that he will not touch the Lord's anointed. And you can read about that in 1 Samuel 24, verses 8 to 13. And in that forgiveness, he finds, I think, freedom. A freedom from fear, a freedom from bitterness. And he finds himself in a spacious place, as we read about in Psalm 18. And how did he have the resources to do that? He has gone from, I have no refuge, no one who cares for my life, as, as we read about in Psalm 142, to, I will awaken the dawn, in Psalm 57. How has he gone from, those who want to kill me will be destroyed by the sword, to, my hand will not touch you. Well, it seems to be no more complicated than spending time with God, sharing his heart, casting his burden on him, receiving strength and comfort and getting a vision for a God who is on his side and will fight for him. And he is able to stand up to Saul in a godly way. So we ask, what challenges do we face that we could easily call our enemy? It could be a person who opposes us. It could be a situation that threatens us. Bring your concerns to God. Cast your burden on him. Get a vision for who he is and allow him to give you the strength to either forgive or overcome these circumstances that are challenging you. To go from the depths to a spacious place. We'll leave it there. Thank you for listening. Uh, God bless and I hope to see you very, very soon.